It's Sun Frog. <laughs> Hi, friends. What's up? Today we'll be taking a look at Developer Diaries, Episode One: Environmental Art. Is that what it's called? Not sure. If you're wondering where Frank is, Friendly Frank is not around. He skipped town. He ran away. Sunny is in Photoshop Hospital. He's, his body's on all separate layers and stuff. I'm trying to redraw him so that he can be more than just a talking head. If the operation is successful, he'll be able to walk around and move his body parts and whatnot. That's why he wasn't in the last uh, show or in this show. So Thursday, I think? No, today's Thursday. Wednesday. Wednesday, Intrepid released Developer Diaries Episode 1. So I thought we could take a look at it together. So let's get started, shall we? Uh, my name is Tad Ehrlich, and I'm a senior environment artist here at Intrepid Studios. Let's stop the action here and see what this says. Modular procedural cities that feel unique. Streamlined, simplifies design process. Allows for a very wide variety of layouts. Works consistently across nine different races. That's my bird in the background. His name is Roger. Primarily, I am in charge of building the objects in the environment building out the environment, placing objects, uh, materials for the objects, and anything that is not a person or a creature running around, I take part in that. Okay, what? This dude just places stuff on the map? I want that job. Does he have to know C++? Whatever this dude's job is, I think I just want it. Let's look at the video slowed down because that happened really fast and I don't know what I just saw. And building out the environment. Placing objects, uh, materials for the objects, and anything that is not a person or a creature running around, I take part in that. Hmm, that's cool. The goal of the node system was to make sure that every place was special and unique. To make sure... Oh, wait, stop here. Okay, now I get it. Now I know why it's called Ashes of Creation. Everything's covered in ashes. And we have to go in and dig up all the dead people, give them CPR, bring them back to life, and then kill them again because they're corrupt. I get it. I, I get it now. Ashes. I get it. Ashes of creation. That every node you go into will offer something different in a different way in a different place, and then have that same system facilitate all the races. Whether you go into a node that's human, go into a node that's elven, or one that's dwarven, each one will be supported by the system. And not only that, but also it provides um, procedural randomization throughout the entire world. So roads, bridges, all that stuff, it can all be randomized and made different every time you go through this area and it builds up. Okay, did this guy just say that every town will be different? Isn't that the way it's been since the beginning of video games? I don't think I've ever played a game where the, game, the towns were exactly the same, except maybe Pac-Man, where every level was the same except faster. I think what he said is, um, like when you destroy a node and it comes back, it's going to look different because all the buildings moved around. I think that's what he said. Everything this guy just said sounded like blah, blah, blah to me. When you Steven. enter into a city, Steven. you're going to notice that the buildings, the placement of NPCs, the, the services that you can access are unique to that particular city. Uh, part of the tool that Tad has been designing really has been to accommodate a procedural method by which each city can have its own identity. One of the key things that I enjoy in games is a sense of discovery and a sense of exploration. And I feel like having a system that provides so much variety means that when I find a new place, it's always going to be special. You know, I'm always- Stop. Okay, who's this lady? And what is she holding? Is that a squid? Is she wearing a blindfold? Justice for s what? What am I looking at? The squid of justice? If you look back, like, way a long time ago in one of the earlier videos that they released, on one of the walls is the Sextopus of Justice. That's one of the gods. 
It's like an octopus, but it only has six legs, so I call it a sextopus. Is this the goddess of justice? Squid justice. What? A blind lady killed a squid, and they made a statue out of it. Because you know how hard it is to kill a squid? And then multiply that by the fact that you're blind? Yeah, it's hard. It's finding something new and different and isn't just the same cookie cutter stuff just thrown all over the world. As a player, I've experienced a lot of MMORP. Team meeting at the foot of the squid lady. Squid lady, you're the one. You've got a squid and I've got none. <laughs> what am I talking about? I should wake up before I make these videos. Jeez. And it's interesting, everyone I've experienced has the same type of railroaded structure uh, that you go from quest A to B to C. Uh, and yeah, Steven. Really, that's how you know, play video games. Of, of that's called playing video games. To create a uh, system that would be dynamic in the creation of your world, to kind of mix uh, you know, the civilization building aspect with the RPG element. I just think it goes hand in hand that if we extend this role-playing game mechanic into the development of cities, uh, that creates really interesting gameplay that players can participate in. And Sid Meier's Civilization with Murder? Each what? Character and identity to be unique to the, to the players that develop it. Part of the technology that's being developed here at Intrepid Studios really relates to our desire to create a world that is developed by the players. Okay, I just noticed a really big downside to having every city look different. This guy really has to go to the bathroom and he can't find it. I don't think he's going to make it. And this allows you to see in real time the changes that you're affecting on the world around you and not just log into the same static game every day. This takes what the community is doing and it presents it in real time to the players so that they can see the effect of their changes. We want to make it special for when a player finds a node and a node is grown and built that it's different from every other node in the world so that they can claim that this node is their special place and we know that someone on the other side of the world isn't going to have a node remotely like it. I would say the thing I like most about working at Intrepid is the fact that it's such a small, cohesive company. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that it's a small company. I want to hear that Steven hired a whole bunch of developers and they live under their desks and they sleep in rabbit hutches and every morning he gives them some food pellets. I want to hear that there's a lot of people working on this game. A lot. And it's just going like gangbusters and it's going to be finished so fast. So fast. Everyone has to interact with everyone else. There's far fewer layers to get in the way of actual production. It's about making the product and getting it done and making it as good as we can. And I like the simplicity of that. In other news, tomorrow is a big Twitch cast. The last Friday of every month is a big Twitch stream and tomorrow's twitch is going to be about nodes it's going to be a node stravaganza i don't really know what they're gonna tell us because they told us so much already but i'm hoping they held something back well that's the first episode of developer diaries i hope you had fun i know i did so yesterday when i went into the discord uh lieutenant toast was asking people if we like developer diaries or if we wish it had more tech stuff in it uh, I wish it had more tech stuff in it. I want to see the buttons and the sliders and things that they push behind the scenes to make to make the stuff work. That's Roger over there going crazy. Did you hear that? Roger says he liked developer diaries too. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe. I'll be posting all the highlights from the Twitch cast on Monday. Do 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 do